What's on? It is. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing all right. Good. Thanks. Good. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody today. I have to catch my breath after singing that song a little bit. You might have been thinking, oh, I can catch my breath. Well, lucky you. I have to keep talking here. So uh, it's a beautiful weekend, isn't it? It's a wonderful time. And like it's been said many times, Happy Mother's Day to all that applies. And if you wonder who that applies to, uh, everybody who has a mother, it applies to you. And I think that's all of us. And Father's Day is next month, so I'm going to talk about that next month, and hopefully you can be here for that, that lesson as well. But what I want to talk about today is not just about mothers, but women in general. So hopefully this will be encouraging to all women and all of us. Um, I was at a part of a church where the, the sermon on Mother's Day talked about uh, Jezebel and how... <laughs> There was a lot more discussion about that lesson than I think about any lesson <laughs> that uh, my former preacher gave. And he, he's an excellent preacher, but afterwards he thought, I shouldn't have given that lesson that day. <laughs> so, uh, interesting. I remember there was discussion in our car on the way home. So, interesting. So, I want to talk about uh, just women in general and what a blessing that women are. And I appreciate Ruben, his thoughts as well. And... This, this first aspect of an excellent wife, far more precious than jewels. And that's important, isn't it? And it is, I think, the second biggest decision that we make in life after making decisions to be baptized, to become a Christian, is to find the right spouse. It's hard, isn't it? And with the divorce rate so high, and uh, some of you have had to go through the terrible divorce, it's, it's hard. And so finding that spouse is a huge decision, and it shouldn't be made lightly. And so it's so big. So I'm going to talk about this, and first of all, uh, just go through uh, this passage here, verses 10 through 31. We're going to read all these verses and focus on different aspects here. Verses 10 through 14, and of course this is on the YouVersion app, and it's on the back of your order of worship if you're visiting with us. You can fill in the blanks and it helps you to uh, keep up. An excellent wife who can find, for her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. So I've broken this passage, uh, 10 through 31, in four sections. And I've chosen a phrase or a word that I think captures each passage pretty well. And so the one I've chosen for this one is a blessing. A good woman in your life is like a good blessing. You know, Proverbs uh, and Ecclesiastes also talks about how it is not good to be with a quarrelsome wife, to have an unhappy wife. That's true. And us men, we definitely need to do our part in trying to make sure that set our spouse and the women in our lives up for success. That's part of our duty as well. But a woman is a great blessing and a good wife is hard to find. And I like how he says this, it's hard to find, not just saying that not every woman is going to be a good wife, but hard to find meaning that you look for her. I think a lot of people, a lot of young people, they try to get married. That's the goal, to get married. Well, just about anybody can get married. The goal is to marry well. That's not just a blessing to you, but it's also a blessing to your spouse as well. Are you a good find? Were you a good find? Or are you the ball to the chain <laughs> to your spouse? I hope not. But that search for a good wife is a great blessing and is a blessing for the whole life. I'm blessed with a good wife and my father was blessed with a very good wife. And hopefully you can understand this. Proverbs 12.4 says, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. A good woman and a good wife can be wonderful or can be rotten to the bone, to his bones. And that crown aspect, do you understand what it's saying there? 
that if a wife is a wonderful woman and respected by other people, then who also does that glorify? The husband. It really is a great blessing to the husband. Because it says here, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. You wear a crown upon your head, and it draws attention, doesn't it? And it really says, okay, this person is special, perhaps royal, because he has a crown upon his head. And men, if you have a, a good wife, if you are blessed with a good wife, then it makes you royal. It is a great blessing to you. And a good thing about this is a wife or a woman being a good woman isn't set for stone looking at somebody and saying, okay, you're a good woman or you're a bad woman and there's no change of that. We're blessed that we can help change ourselves by the way we live our lives. If you're not the woman that you want to be or you're not the man that you want to be, you can work on that. You can't just say, well, I'm just not that type of person. Well, that's sad, isn't it? If you're out of shape, it's like, well, I was just born out of shape. That's just the way it is. I'm just a, this shape, whatever this shape this is, how many angles I have. But you work at it, don't you? You work at it to get in shape. Um, and you set goals for that. And Proverbs 31 does a wonderful job at painting a, a wonderful picture of a goal to go towards. I want to be this type of woman, speaking for a woman. As a woman, I want to be this type of woman that looks like this. And for example, uh, you know, I ran a race yesterday, and I set that as a goal for myself to go towards. It's interesting, they mark you up big time. Have you ever been in one of those races? I couldn't get it all off. I, they put like my age, they put my age there and the number 261 there. Uh, I had to scrub a couple more days to get all that off. And some people were like, do you have to put my age there? <laughs> and by then, they're already done. <laughs> and, but they mark you up all over. But that goal was a blessing. Because without that goal, I wouldn't have done all of the exercises beforehand and gotten in shape. Proverbs 31, if you read it, you don't say, oh, I'm not that person. <sighs> I don't like this chapter. <laughs> Well, it can give you a goal. It can give you that image to say, that's where I'm going towards. If that's what it is to be a good woman, then I'm going to do it. Don't just say, uh, well, that's not me. I'm going to write a new chapter. Who I am. A spiteful wife is a blessing, you know. <laughs> that's not good. Take this as from God. And so this brings great honor to the husband. You married well. I've been told that many times, and maybe someone has told it to my wife. But I have married well. I was very picky. And many people have told me that I was too picky about choosing a wife. That I've broken up with people. I like, why did you break up to her? I don't know. She's got kind of a lean to the left. No. <laughs> people say, I was just way too picky. It's good to be picky about things that are that important, isn't it? If you're going to go out and buy a new car, you say, oh, just give me one. What's, whatever one you have. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I like how he says that he has complete trust and confidence in her. That says a lot, doesn't it? You know, some people will say, you know what? We had this thing in our family that uh, we can look at each other's phones at any time to see if they're texting or seeing anything that they shouldn't see. And my thought is, if you have to do that, You've already lost, right? Let me see your phone, see what you're doing there. If you have to do that, it's already said. Have trust and confidence in your spouse. That means so much. Now, it's not that we're perfect, because none of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes as spouses. Your wives are going to make mistakes, okay? Your husband's going to make mistakes. But to forgive, to do the best you can is so key. And the surprise blessings. I like how it talks about that, the, the, the flax that she gets. And she's like a merchant ship that brings the, the goods in. That's a great blessing. Hopefully, as you've married your wife and your spouse, you get many more blessings than you thought that you were going to get. Really? You know how to do that? Oh, yeah. 
you are like a merchant ship that brings great blessings. Now, for me, that's really true because she's come from overseas. And so <laughs> it's great blessings your spouse should be to you. Not just bring it sometimes, you know, you know, rats were not naturally to this continent. They came over on the first ships that came over from Europe. Hopefully, you're not bringing rats into your marriage. Sometimes we, we may do that, but we have to work on that as well. The next thing I want to talk about is being a wise worker. And so that's in the mind there, a wise worker. This passage here, 15 through 20. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, and she stretches out her hands to the needy. What a blessing. And so she's a wise worker. And you may think, what is a wise worker? Well, in my mind, a wise worker first is a hard worker. Sometimes people think, you know, work smarter, not harder. But every wise worker that I know is, doesn't just work wisely, but hard. And I see that with her. And I think women typically do this better sometimes, but they're always busy doing something. I know my mom, she, she was, this describes her very well. Sometimes when I was in high school, I'm trying to relax maybe after uh, some kind of sports practice and everything, but my mom's always doing something. And I would say, Mom, will you stop? <laughs> you're always so busy doing things, I can't relax because you're working so much. So this, this described her. Does this describe your mom as well? She was always busy doing things, always cleaning or or working in the garden, doing things, because she understood that a wise worker is a hard worker. And that is a great blessing. It talks about it here and later in chapter 31, that she's not idle. She doesn't just think about the things to do, but she does things. Always busy about things. And it says that she considers, analyzes, and acts. Now, as most everything, a ble our blessings and our strengths are sometimes our weaknesses. And I talk about this, if you've done premarital counseling with me, I've talked about this as well. Sometimes women overanalyze things and can pick things apart, but that is a great blessing as well. Because women bless us to help us think things through. And us men, sometimes we don't think all things all the way through the way we need to. And our wives can help us with that. Have you thought about that? Well, no, I did not. <laughs> and thank you. She, she can help us with that. And so she considers and thinks about it. Now, once again, she doesn't need to overanalyze things because I like it says this here. She considers, analyzes, and acts. She doesn't just analyze, but she moves forward and does something. Sometimes that can, that can petrify people, you know, paralysis by analysis. But this wise woman acts and does things. And she's able to self-judge and is satisfied. I tell you what, that is wisdom on a high level, is it not? When someone can self-judge themselves and decide what to do, wow. Because most times people continue to do bad things and someone else has to tell them, oh, did you know this? What are you doing talking to me that way? But a wise woman and a wise person can self-judge and say, I need to work on something. I need to get better. And this woman talks about in chapter 31 does this. Proverbs 22, 9 says, He who is generous will be blessed. For he gives some of his food to the poor. And this wise worker, this woman in, in Proverbs 31, helps the poor. Helps the disenfranchised to be blessed by her. Isn't it nice to be around generous people? Not just because you may get something from them, but you don't have to worry about them being greedy 
Or he's taking the last piece of something, wherever it is. But she is a blessing to so many. So generous and not greedy goes a long way in all of our lifestyles. The next one is a good reputation. Verses 21 through 26 says this, She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. It's nice, isn't it? If you ask people about you, what would they say? If you gave them some fill in the blanks, when I have idle time, I do this. What would people say? What is your reputation? And this woman's reputation in Proverbs 31 is impeccable. And people talk about it. I like how it says that she's prepared. And it's evident because her family is well clothed. She, th she thinks about the winter and the summer and thinks about the summer and the winter and provides for her family. Make sure that things are planned out well and accordingly. Once again, this is something that takes thought. And people will say, look how well your children are clothed. They'll, they always look together and, and uh, uh, for the appropriate season. <laughs> and that's wise. It's good. Not afraid of the snow. And this really sounds a lot like the parable of the ant, doesn't it? The ant is always busy doing something and is prepared for the bad weather. So is a good woman for her household. And she has chosen her husband wisely. And it's part of his success. When it says that the man is at the gates, if you didn't know, the gates of the city, that's where business is done. That's where the main men of the town get together. They do business. And different times of the Jewish background, they may give a sandal, you know, give one sandal to the other person to, to, to secure a deal. And so when the wife saw the husband come home with one sandal, she knew he had done a deal. What did you buy today? But it was, it was important that she, as a wise woman, chose wisely herself. Because how wise is a woman if she chooses poorly? So to all of you unmarried women out there, choose wisely who you marry. Because if your husband is unwise, he'll bring you down. He will. There, there, there's a cap of how successful we're going to be if we don't choose a wise spouse. Of course, this is also true to the unmarried uh, young men out there. Choose wisely who you marry. Your spouse will either help you to grow and be more well-known, or they'll bring you down. They'll limit your cap how successful you'll be. Now, it's not just that... Maybe, hopefully, you're not looking at the person you're dating going, this may be our last day. <laughs> but you encourage the person next to you, right? You encourage your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, saying, you know what, you have so much potential. You can be so much more. Isn't it great when people, someone can see greatness in you? It's encouraging. And my mother was that for me. My mother blessed me tremendously. She had hope in me in times when maybe I didn't. And that meant so much to me. And mothers are that for their children. Sometimes more than the fathers. And thank you for that. And I say keep doing that. And this is true to fathers. You need to do this as well. But inspire your children by seeing greatness in them. And to that person next to you, your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, encourage them, saying, you can be so much more. You can do great. Because I see this aspect. Now, don't lie to them. You can be president. You know, the, look at them and see what they can do. Look at their talents and skills and say, I see this in you. Rise up. Take a chance. Grow. And that is a great blessing. 
So a good character is seen clearly. Just like bad character. It's evident. If someone's lazy, you can see it pretty easily. If someone has a good work ethic, and the things they do is well done, it's seen clearly. That is a great reputation to have. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to ask so-and-so to do something. Oh, you better ask someone else too. That's not good. Or it's, hey, I'm going to ask so-and-so to do something. It's going to be done wonderfully. You don't have to worry about it. You just ask them and forget about it. It'll be done well. Isn't that a good reputation? And that's this woman of Proverbs 31. She has a wonderful reputation because she's living it. And wisdom and teaching flows easily out of her mouth because she is wise. Because she lives what she says. These things don't come easily. They take hard work. They take studying wise women and wise people to become wise. You don't wake up wise. But it takes much effort. And lastly, a beauty. A true beauty. I just want you to look at all this picture here. Proverbs 31, 27 to 31 says, She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. I love this aspect of it here. And, and you see how that hair and all those characteristics are there? Look lovely as an angel, beautiful, gentle, charitable, all of that. That is what makes a woman beauty, beautiful. It's not her physical appearance. It's not the softness of her skin. A true beautiful woman is beautiful by what she does and who she is. And a big part of that is being a good Christian woman. If, you don't, if your spouse isn't a good Christian woman, then you have to work on her. That's your biggest aspect, that you need to work on her. If you're dating someone who's not a Christian, don't marry that person if they're not Christian. I just want to say that. And so her works and her character make her so beautiful. Now this goes counter to our culture right now. Our culture is saying all the time, well, how pretty is she? That that's the beauty of a woman is how pretty she is. This is saying a woman is beautiful by who she is. And just like that picture that those words make her lovely hair there, that's what makes a woman a true beauty is who she is. And so a woman focuses on her family, loves them, and is praised by her husband and those that know her. And finally, a true beauty fears the Lord loves the Lord, respects the Lord, and helps guide her family closer to the Lord. Hopefully your mom did that. And if you're a mother, do that. If you plan to be a mother, do that. And you know what? All of us, in a way, are mothers because we have so many children here. We all work at doing this aspect to the kids. Because all the kids that we have, we help. You know, all of you are like uncles and aunts to my kids and grandmothers and grandfathers to my kids. And that is a blessing in the church to have so much help to raise our children. Because it is hard to do it by yourself, isn't it? It really takes a community to raise children. And we are greatly blessed in this church family. If you're visiting with us today, I want to invite you to join our church family as we not only help, as I'm saying, with your children, but we want to help you to be a wise woman, a wise man, good parents, good people. But all of that starts in fearing the Lord and becoming a Christian. We do that in baptism here. As you get baptized and, and, and wash away your sins and you rise up as a new person to be saved, it's key to being a Proverbs 31 person. Please come forward as we sing this song.